Hi, this is Mike. Welcome to the Backyard Pioneer, my YouTube channel. It's the companion channel on my blog, which you can find at www.thebackyardpioneer.com. Today we're going to develop, delve into part two of assembling a get-home bag. This is going to wrap up the video series. Just as a side note, on the on the first on the first series, we covered clothing, tools, and philosophy. Since then, here on Long Island, we had a pretty bad winter storm. Some of you may have read about it in the news. Um, when I left for work, we got six. We were forecast to get six to twelve inches of snow. We ended up getting thirty. So it ended up being a pretty extreme weather event for us here. You know, with a lot of people who had to spend the night in their car. Um, I think the lessons we need to take away from that, bring into the forefront, are having a properly stocked vehicle for winter weather with a good all-around car kit and the concept of carrying a get-home bag. Something like this would have made a night in a car a lot easier to bear or walk home a little bit more uh, easy on a lot of people. I've read stories of a lot of people with insufficient footwear for trekking out into the snow. Um, just a little bit of a change I've made since we saw the bag last time is I've always carried a fixed blade knife. This is a swamp rat, desert rat. Last time we had the swamp rat howling rat. Um, I just changed it up a little bit. I know you guys, a lot of guys and gals here, you know, are into their gear. so. Figured I'd, I'd highlight that. This is a knife I've had for a lot of years now, actually. The first time I used it was only a couple weeks ago. It's been a safe queen for me. It was a bit of a ground knife. Um, if you know, these are from the Busey line of knives. High dollar, high value, um, full tang, and uh, good flix, fixed blade knife, you know, is, is a force, be, force multiplier in a bag. Does a lot of different stuff. Just wanted to show that. It's one of my prides and joys. Maybe we'll get around to doing a review on that someday in the future. And there's the Kydex sheath I got for it. It's from Bi Brown. Um, I, I got a deal on sheath. Uh, sheath I got to admit, the uh, the gray wouldn't have been my first one. I would have went something a little more close to it. But with the price of custom sheath these days, when I saw it for as cheap as it was going for, I couldn't uh, pass it up. So let's jump right in. Up here in the top of the bag, this, this is my. It's got some various sundries in here. That's my word lately. We got fire starting here. We got your regular good old fashioned bic lighter in this tin, and everything's in here kind of tight. I like it nice and secure. It's a pain in the butt to uh, take it, not to get it out, but to get it back in. And it, I did a few shots of the video and it kind of came out, came out kind of crappy. So I'm just gonna describe what's in here without pulling each one out. In here, you got Fatwood and Nesbitt tab, really good tinder to get stuff going. And more fire making, we got a magnesium bar with a flint on the back and some dryer lint. So we've got a couple different kinds of tinder and, and fuel to get a fire going. We have a little bit of extra duct tape, always comes in handy with stuff. In here we have the CR123A batteries, which go with my Surefire light, which we have in the side pouch over here. And this carries the AAAs, which are my regular stream light. Um, I know two, bat two flashlights with two different batteries can be a little bit of overkill, but I think they both have their place. The stream light's on me every day, and the Surefire's here for an emergency. In here we got a little, nice little cargo net pouch, a couple bandanas, good multi-use item to include in a get-home bag, cover your face in case of dust or smoke, makeshift, uh, I was going to say makeshift bandanas, but makeshift slings. You can rip them up for tinder. You can find a different, bunch of different uses. I got a pen in there. It comes in handy during the day. You never know when you're going to need to write something home, write something down. Delving into the bag a little further. And again, this is still the Mongo Versi pack that I showed off last time. My pride and joy. Um, in here, this is more of my personal stuff. I got car, you know, chargers for my phone and various stuff like that. My iPod ends up being the part that puts the personal man purse thing of this. You open it up, got a nice weatherproof car compartment like I showed last time. Not rocking too much stuff in here right now with everything. You kind of lose a little bit of space on the inside. Just have a notebook, backyardpioneer.com, a little bit of self-promotion, toot my own horn. Uh, I'm a hunter, so when you're outside, sometimes nature calls, so I've always carried a little bit of toilet paper. Another multi-use item, you know, you can just general hygiene, and if you have to use it for the obvious, but you can also light it on fire, use it a little bit of tinder if you have to. To go with the hygiene motif, I have the Outgo Waterless Wash. Um, it's not too bad. It's not my most favorite product. It gets the job done. I should add a little hand sanitizer. I ran out and I'm guilty of not putting it back in. I did convince my wife to use this to wash her hair last time we went camping. She wasn't too happy with it. It got the job done, but from a female perspective, it wasn't up to, I guess, what her normal shampoo in the shower is. But she's a trooper and she's stuck with it for me. I gotta appreciate a woman like that in my life. Um, next pouch we come to in here. This pouch is more about shelter building and staying dry. I have a nice sized hank of power cord. It's about 75 feet in this one. I don't know if you can see. I got these neat little uh, Velcro almost zip ties. I got them at Home Depot. They come in handy. I threw a couple extra on. You never know when you need to strap something to your gear. They're not 
gonna hold huge weight, but they do get the job done. Digging in a little bit further, we find I have two of those emergency blankets. These are the ones from SOL. They're a little more high-end than the ones you might find in Walmart. Uh, I like that they have the orange on the outside, just in case you're trying to signal someone and they are the reflective material they keep heat coming back in. Um, these are never gonna be a substitute for good warm clothing or a sleeping bag in your car. But for makeshift, you know, you, you can do what you have to with these. I have two of them. You'll see. I, I devil get into this pouch a little bit more. I have my contractor's bags. I always look at it. Between two contractor's bags, some power cord, and the emergency blankets, I figure I'll be able to at least stay dry and a little bit of warm during a desperate night. Um, so I, I'm always about having a little bit of redundancy and options built into the bag. We jump into the next compartment. We open it up. This is going to be the food compartment. I'm, right now I'm carrying a mainstay bar. Um, these are quote unquote mainstay of my uh, get home bag nutrition. Um, I know they get a little bit of a bad rap online. People call them fancy cookies and everything like that. But for me, these aren't, these don't form the bulwark of my preparedness. Um, you know, definitely eaten out of the pantry or the garden and, you know, out of the freezer and in case of emergency, like we have actually in the past during Irene, Nemo, and Sandy, three big names if you live on Long Island. But I, I, to get through a night, I'd rather have something to nosh on than nothing at all. And I, I'm guilty of if I have jerky or some sort of energy bar that I like, I eat it. I'm never going to open these up and eat it unless I have to. I got my spork. This generally goes with my food for the day. Carry, you know, bring bring lunch to work every day. Throw this in and out. It's in there. Um, I have a, a, an emergency stove. It's good for getting a little bit of water boiled up. I'll show you. I got a, a stainless steel cup in here later on. Throw it sporking. Got a couple tea bags. Got a pouch of hot chocolate. Just something. Build a little bit of comfort on a cold night if it comes to it. Upgraded. Seriously upgraded my. Uh, First aid kit. This is a uh, field trauma kit from Adventure Medical Kits. Pretty good company. I get all my camping kits from them. The big kit for home is actually from them. Um, I think they build the most complete off-the-shelf kit, if, you, if that makes sense. You do have to add a few things to it. I've added Tylenol and Ibuprofen, some anti-diarrheals and some Benadryl to this. But the main part was, I guess you can see, if you can see on that hand, I had an accident at work and bleeding profusely. Needed a lot of stitches and ended up with some tendon damage. And uh, not, that's what we found out. We have high-end boo-boo kits on our uh, trucks and not, not first aid kits. Getting over here, we'll get a little bit into the water. You can see a Nalgene bottle made in the USA. I had the cheap, cheapo uh, Walmart bottles. They ended up breaking on me, I guess, between the temperature differentials out at work all day long. This thing is I've dropped, taken a bit of abuse because you get scratched up. It's dishwasher safe, BPA free. can highly recommend these. You get the wide mouth so it's a little easier to fill. Should add that every day I fill this up before I leave for work. I don't drink out of it. I have another I have a cooler on my truck and I have another Nalgene bottle. So I know it does afford me the flexibility, but then when I get home from work I make it my goal to drink this so I get my proper hydration in for the day. And the last little bit of kit that I got in here, it's like a stainless steel camp cup. Fits beautifully in there. It's from GSI Outdoor. Fits right on that little stove I showed you. You can boil some water, make a cup of tea if you have to. Um, I guess you could add some of the uh, um, pack, pack a mountain house. We'll go for you know go decently in that. You'd be able to throw a spork, a little kit, and some water, and you got yourself a hot meal on the side of the road if you ever need it. Um, one detail of the uh, Maxpedition bag I think is great. I don't know if you can see that. I love how they hold that bottle in there. Uh, it, it tightens up on the inside securely. That thing's not coming out of there at all. So there you have it. That's the rest of the gear that I have in my get home bag. I hope you enjoyed it. I um, just want to make a quick mention that here on the Backyard Pioneer, currently I'm giving away one of my favorite pieces of gear. This ends on Friday, um, th Thursday, February 28th. So if you're watching this after 2013, you know, sorry, you're not going to have a chance to win it. But maybe I'll still be in business and giving away something good. There you go. That's the knife, the Endura 4 full flat ground in gray. Let me show you that. You can see open it up still in the bubble wrap has the stuff in there um, it's been sitting in my safe a little bit I bought it for when I did cross the 5,000 likes and 1,000 views on YouTube which I currently have so I'm pretty stoked about that one of my favorite pieces of gear you find in my pocket every day I just want to give a little bit back to the community say thank you for all the support I've been getting and uh, you can check me out on the backyardpioneer.com that's where you find the link to uh, enter to win the contest I'm trying something new it's going through raffle copter um, not looking for anyone's email address or anything just a simple like on facebook or leave a comment on the blog 
as always, I protect everyone's uh, email you know, security. I take that. Um, you're never going to get spam from me. Um, I just like to do updates when I'm doing new stuff. So there you have it. You check me out on thebackyardpioneer.com. You find links to all of my social media, Facebook, Pinterest, and on YouTube. Um, I tweet not too well. I'm guessing I'm just a little too old to grasp that. I seem to have more to say than 140 characters. Um, just note on Pinterest if anyone's interested. I'm looking for pinners for a new board I started. Self-sufficiency, homesteading, self-reliance, preparedness. Uh, just looking for a lot of good how-tos and pictures of gear. So if you're interested, you can drop me an email at mike at thebackyardpioneer.com and I'll get you an invite to that. All right, thank you for stopping by and good luck to all those who enter to win.